Hi, welcome for the train the trainer session on soft skills. My name is Kenny Muscat and I work um, as a lecturer at the Malta College of Art, Science and Technology. I basically paired this um, train the trainer session of the soft skills unit and the topic that we're going to discuss is introduction to intrapersonal and interpersonal skills. Just an overview of why the need uh, for the for the soft skills unit. So basically, as you might be aware, as part of the project, we prepared um, trainings for um, students and also staff in the food manufacturing industry on four different areas, which are the uh, plant based technology, digital skills and automation, green green skills and finally soft skills. As you are aware, um, employers are all the time telling education institutions that listen, yes, students are prepared technically, but when it comes to soft skills, there is more work that needs to be done. And this unit is precisely doing, doing that, supporting our students, our learners, in improving okay, their soft skills, the skills that um, they are going to use whatever their position is at the place of work and wherever they are working. So let me explain a little bit um, the methodology for this for this um, session. Basically, um, the, pre the presentation was prepared for students, OK, and we're going uh, through that. However, I also prepared additional comments because ultimately you are going to be the trainers yourself. So this is a trained trainer session. So I will be from time to time explaining the rationale um, behind decisions, decisions taken and approaches um, adopted. Slides presented in red are intended to discuss why these particular sessions have been provided. And this is particularly aimed at, yes, you the trainers. I hope you, you realize by the end of this session that here yeah, we're focusing on the student. So this, uh, these are student-centered rather than teacher-centered um, trainings, which is crucial for um, uh, the type of students that you are going to have in class and also to the type of unit that we are focusing on. So the content of this session introduction to intrapersonal and interpersonal skills if you remember the title here the topic was introduction to intrapersonal and interpersonal skills so what exactly are we going to cover um, in this session which is prepared for students so first there is an introduction yes to intrapersonal and interpersonal skills then we're going to identify discuss the difference between intrapersonal skills and interpersonal skills. And finally, we finish off with examples of intrapersonal and interpersonal skills. This is not a topic on its own, but it is one of the topics um, forming part of the soft skills unit. So if I had to deliver this session with the students, I would start immediately with, a, with asking this question. What are your expectations for today's session? And we can, for example, get replies from Mentimeter. Now, let me go briefly to um, Mentimeter.com and show you how you can do it because it is very straightforward, but I would like to share this with you in case you are not familiar with Mentimeter. So the question that I'm going to ask is, what are your expectations for today's session? So basically I'm going on the internet, um, mentimeter.com, as you can see from here, mentimeter.com. I obviously have an account, which is um, free of charge if you're using it, um, for for a few slides, otherwise you would have, for example, here as you as you can see to upgrade. Let me click on new presentation. Presentation name is going to be um, expectations of 
session can do office do whatever um, you want here create presentation and i am presented with this and i have to choose the slide type okay so and there are various options i can obviously go for multiple choice a word cloud open-ended questions scales ranking question and answer or if you're using a quiz, you can explore the, with these as well. Let me go for open-ended question, okay? And the question I have here is, uh, I need to modify here, the rather than leave open-ended, and I'm going to go, what are your expectations for today's session? And I can try this by clicking on present. So the students will be shown this. They will be going to menti.com. And then they're going to use this code, which is shown here for 7018704. Our students are using their mobile phones most of the time. So might as well use technology in our sessions. So what are your expectations for today's sessions? And all the replies um, that um, uh, that they come up with will be visible here for all of the others to see. So this is a straightforward example of how you can use technology um, in, our, in our session. Now, using Mentimeter is not the only option. Obviously, it really depends on what you have, um, what you are preparing for. If you are preparing for an online session, Mentimeter can be useful, but you can also have a discussion like asking each participant, listen, um, what are you um, expecting from today's session? So that can be another idea. If you're if you're in class, if you're doing this in a physical class, once again, both options are um, uh, appropriate. Now, why ask for expectations of of decision? So, why exactly are we doing this? First of all, let me remind you that the units that uh, we prepared as part of this project, the Erasmus Plus EQ Vegan project are units in learning outcomes and in um, and in nature such such units are centered around the students like for example the student by the end of uh, the module by the end of this unit by the end of this session is able to whatever and it is down what the student is able to do so units and learning outcomes are centered around the students learners are encouraged to take more res responsibility of their learning we talk a lot about um, supporting our students to become independent, but how exactly? This is an example of how we can slowly, slowly give students more independence when it comes to take responsibility of their own learning. The third point, and I think it's a, an important point, this one. That possibly we make amendments in learning activities as we go along with the training sessions. Of course, I am aware that this might not always be possible. But if you prepared this, this, and this, and one of the students, two of the students come up with some expectations, and you realize that yes, this expectation makes a lot of sense for, for these students. In that case, you are highly encouraged to make some minor amendments and try to accommodate the student. Finally, this is also a way of encouraging learners to engage in learning activities. Gone are the days where learning is done in a class where the teacher, the trainer is talking and the students are simply listening. Students want to be um, be involved. Students need to be involved. Okay, and this is a small example of how we can encourage our students, our learners, to be engaged in the learning activities that we prepare. Obviously, you can come up as well um, with a different way of introducing the the session. 
But in my case, I chose reply on millimeter or else a discussion with the expectations. You can, for example, have a post-it, um, give students post-it notes. They write some expectations. They go to the front of the class and they and they stick to the board, whatever. So like that, you don't know exactly who's saying what, maybe especially if it's the start of um, what the students are still getting to know each other. They are still getting to know you. And there are different ways of what you can do. So after discussing the expectations, then I believe that we need to introduce the goals, okay? To share our goals with the students. So in, in this particular case, by the end of the session, you will be able to, the first one, recognize the importance of intrapersonal and interpersonal skills to have an improved personal and professional life. Notice that here, we're not talking about intrapersonal and interpersonal skills in isolation, but we're giving a context. Why? Yes, recognizing the importance of these skills to have, a, to have an improved personal and professional life. And notice that although we're talking about students and also employees within the food manufacturing industry, we're still focusing on the personal life. Because let's keep in mind that um, we are not simply working, but we are living and we have our personal lives as well. Second point, identify different intrapersonal and interpersonal skills we use in our daily lives. The third point, differentiate between intrapersonal and interpersonal skills. So what is the difference between these two uh, types of skills? The fourth and final point, understand that intrapersonal and interpersonal skills can be practiced and improved. Okay, so in bold, the importance of interpersonal and interpersonal skills, the difference between these two, um, uh, and also understanding how these can be practiced and improved. And here, especially with the introduction of the fourth goal, we are already setting a mindset or supporting our students to set a mindset that, listen, yes, I am going to take something from this session because intrapersonal and interpersonal skills can be practiced and can be improved. So I can improve. This is an opportunity for me as a student to improve. So, icebreaker. Once again, it really depends on whether this is the very first session of the module. Um, instead of an icebreaker, you can go for an energizer. Since the topic is introduction to intrapersonal and interpersonal skills, I believe that this is one of the first sessions that is going to be covered in this unit, and hence an icebreaker here makes sense. So, I am asking um, students, participants, these three questions. Who am I? Can you share something you are proud of? Why am I here? And before expecting the students to start themselves, normally I am the first one to, to introduce myself. So who am I? Okay. What brings me here? Why am I the person that is um, delivering this session? Okay, my personal, so my professional background, my academic background, my hobbies, possibly. Something you are proud of, you never know what they are going to come up with. Why am I here? So that you understand a little bit their motivation. Are they here because they were forced to be here? Are they here because they want to learn, they want um, to get a certificate, they want to progress at the place of work? Benefits of icebreakers. Can be, can be various. I look at teaching as, first and foremost, forming a relationship with the participants, with the learners, with the students. So first, the relationship. And then comes the material that I need to focus on. If I start immediately with, with the material, 
there is a possibility that students feel distant from you. Whereas with an icebreaker, we realize that there are lots of similarities among us. Okay, so they feel more at ease. This is particularly important, in my opinion, when you have adult students, when they have been um, in employment for a number of years. So, um, a number of years ago, they were in education, but not anymore. So, they might be a little bit perhaps hesitant to come back. Okay, so icebreakers, in my opinion, are crucial. Now, the first real activity, okay, so concrete activity related to the topic being covered in this session. So this is the activity. In the situations shown in the next slides, observe what is happening. So I'm not going to start immediately myself with discussing intrapersonal and interpersonal skills, but I am going to elicit um, what they already know. Okay. So the situations are the following, and I will move from one slide to the slide, to, from one slide to the other slowly, so that you get an idea. So the first two situations that we are showing, then we move on to the next set of two photos, situations, And the final set are these two photos, situations. Then I ask this question, what is happening? Have you observed any skills or lack of skills in these situations? And I don't expect immediate answers. So I give them a minute, possibly go back slowly slowly to show them once again because now they know the question okay and give them some time to think about what is happening here but also the second question the skills or lack of skills in these situations so after some time you start getting the answers in some instances, you will have those students who are going to answer immediately. In other instances, you're going to have just blank faces staring at you because they are all waiting for someone else to start. So it might be better to ask one of the participants directly so that you set the ball rolling and start the conversation. Normally, after the first input, students would volunteer. If not, just um ask students like for example listen so um what do you think is happening here uh, can you notice um a difference between the first and the second um situation what are the skills in your opinion that that are being used in the first photo where we have a group of people working in the second in the second um uh, situation we also have a group of people but for me it doesn't seem that uh, they are working together. What do you think exactly is happening here? Okay, and you start um, this this type of conversation. Okay, so what is happening here? Have you observed any skills or lack of skills in these situations? Now you might want obviously to change the situations from the ones provided here. It's really up to you. It's very important that you feel comfortable. Um, with the material that um, you are using for your own um, session. Now, we come to a conclusion. So, until now, most of the discussion was being done by the students themselves. I was just moderating, okay? And this is the conclusion of this activity. Most of the skills you have identified are either intrapersonal skills or interpersonal skills. So the first time that we are actually focusing on intrapersonal and interpersonal skills. And we conclude the activity there. Then I move 
to the second part. Difference between intrapersonal and interpersonal skills. So here we have, in my opinion, a simplified, a simplified um, table that highlights the basic differences. And I can start with the interpersonal skills. So the interpersonal skills refer to something involving relations between persons. And they focus on the relations between persons. So at least there is myself and another person. In fact, the second point says that there are two or more parties involved here. There are varied reasons for people to engage in interpersonal communications. And normally I would have a short discussion on which situations in your daily lives do you notice that you engage in interpersonal communications? And they start coming up with the answers. At work, while on the bus to go to work, at home with my family, with friends, uh, with my partner, at school, if I'm still a student, at university, college, whatever. Okay, so yes, there are varied reasons for people to engage in interpersonal communication. There is feedback from the parties involved. And I try to have a little bit of a conversation with the students here. There is feedback from the parties involved. Do you agree that when I am interacting with others, um, there, there is feedback? And normally they say sometimes yes, sometimes no. And I ask for a volunteer and I offer, I, I ask actually the, vo the volunteer uh, to ask me any question that comes to his, her or their, their mind. And they normally ask me a question. At first they are a little bit hesitant, but then because they have to, of course, um, they ask me a question. You never know what they are going to come up with. And when I ask the question, I just look at them and stare. I just stare at them. And then they start to feel a little bit uncomfortable or awkward because they expect me to reply. In some instances, they think that they have asked me a question which, which was maybe too personal and they feel a little bit bad about the situation. And then I ask the whole class, was there feedback here? Most of the times they say no. And then there will be one, two or three students would say yes. And uh, then we continue about the discussion We say yes, there was feedback involved here because my silence is a form of feedback as well. Maybe I'm trying to tell you I'm not in the mood. Maybe I'm trying to tell you this is too personal. Maybe I'm trying to tell you this is none of your business. Obviously, it's just a role play. And the idea is to learn from um, the context and understand that wherever I am interacting with others, there is always feedback. Then I move on to the intrapersonal. This refers to something occurring within the individual mind or self. So this time there is just me, myself, and I. In fact, the second point here focuses on the fact that there are no external parties involved. There is no one else. It may involve critical analysis or even a response to loneliness. So here, normally, I have a discussion that sometimes we choose to be on our own. However, at times, we, are, we, feel, we feel lonely. We are on our own, not because we choose to, but because the situation um, leads us to this. And there is only individual feedback. And once again, here normally I have a small conversation with the students um, about how they give feedback to themselves or are they doing this? Before moving on, normally here 
something that you can do as well. Um, you can ask, for example, like who else prefers to be on his own? When I say his, I'm referring to his, her and, and theirs. Who prefers to be with others? And you start having a show of hands. And then the conversation goes on like, um, yes, it really depends on the situation. I normally prefer to be on my own, but then obviously I like to meet friends once in a while and have some, some good time with them. Other, other people would say that, um, no, I really don't like to be on my own. And I, I need to, I want to, and I need to be um, uh, with others all the time. And here you highlight the fact that, listen, you realize, you should start realizing that we are different individuals here. So it's important to understand others to have better relationships with, with them, to work better with them as well. Now, another activity here. So use your sticky notes to identify other intrapersonal and interpersonal skills, which we have not discussed so far. Stick these at the correct place on the board. So before the start of the lesson, I would have um, a session focusing on interpersonal skills and another dedicated for interpersonal skills. I would have um, sticky notes with me and I would hand I would hand them these sticky notes. They write whatever they want and they go to the front of the class and stick these sticky notes at the correct place. If you're doing this online, then you can have a, um, a, a short conversation. Um, uh, so obviously we need to adapt according to the situation. Um, uh, just to clarify here, identify other intrapersonal and interpersonal skills. Remember that um, before we covered this activity. So of the situations of um, the, the photos with the different situations, and I was asking what is happening. Have you observed any skills or lack of skills in these situations? And we concluded that most of these skills are either intrapersonal or interpersonal skills. And after this differentiation between interpersonal and intrapersonal, if we missed some intrapersonal and interpersonal skills, which probably is going to be the case, then now is the time for them to try to guess whether try to reason out rather than, than, than guess whether these are intrapersonal skills or interpersonal skills. Now, a small discussion about this activity. So I'm referring to this here, the one with the sticky notes. It's a hands-on session, okay? Hands-on hands -on sessions are crucial for teaching and learning, but in particular for this type of unit focusing on soft skills. This unit, as you may have realized by now, is mostly based on hands-on sessions and not theoretical sessions. It's useless to know the definition of teamwork, to know the definition of communication and other interpersonal and interpersonal skills if we are not able to practice and improve these, these skills. And we can only improve these skills through hands-on sessions, not just by explaining them. Soft skills can be learned if they are experienced and not simply discussed. And it's very important that you as trainers understand this, because ultimately you will be the ones delivering um, the unit. And let's move away for this unit from preparing for theoretical sessions. So soft skills can be learned if they are experienced not simply discussed. I would add learned and improved. So that is an example of a hands-on session related to today's session. Now, examples of intrapersonal and interpersonal skills. And a couple of years ago, colleagues of mine that were um, preparing the, the material for intrapersonal and interpersonal skills at our own college, came up, actually found this, this model, which, which I like because basically we have most of the interpersonal and interpersonal skills listed here um, just in one model. And the way normally I would go around this is ask the students to identify 
one of the intrapersonal and interpersonal skills. Give them some time and let them come up with their understanding of the skill. It can be a definition, it can be what dating this intrapersonal and interpersonal skill means and why it is important. And you start with student A. Student A chose self-awareness and student A comes up with an understanding of self-awareness, being able to understand myself, being aware of makes, what makes me happy, of what makes me sad, being of, aware of my background, being aware of where I want to go, my dreams, my fears. And why is this important? Self-awareness is important because I cannot be in a position to understand others before I understand myself well. So this would be some form of some form of answer. And you let the students uh, discuss the skills. Obviously, your role is as well to add to what the students are saying, because in some instance, they would be leaving out some important aspects of each of these intrapersonal and interpersonal skills. Some of these skills you will realize that might be a little bit um, too difficult for them to identify. They don't, they find it challenging to relate to, like for example, integrity. In most classes, most of the students never, never um, choose integrity. And then I explain myself, I give my explanation, and then, yes, they relate uh, better. So the interpersonal skills here are goal setting, sustained attention, ethics, integrity, curiosity, self-awareness, self-care, self-efficacy, also one of the, uh, one of the interpersonal skills that is mostly left out, self-regulation, perseverance, initiative, and then we move on to the interpersonal. It really depends, of course, on what the students chose, like adaptability, assertiveness, teamwork, empathy, networking, social awareness, conflict management, communication, being the verbal, being the written, and also the nonverbal. Then are also in this model, the cognitive skills. And most of these we're focusing in in other units, like in, in this particular core, um, uh, in, in these particular units that we prepared for this project, the plant-based technology, the digital skills, and also the green skills. When we finished exploring this model, I try to have a brief discussion with them. Which of these do you think are the most important to improve our personal and professional lives? And obviously, um, you guide the students to come up to the conclusion that all of these are important. Yes, it's understandable that some of them would probably, for some students, mean more, so are more important than, than others. Then, the next part of this session, practicing and improving skills. And I have a question for the students. Can you identify? an intrapersonal or interpersonal skill, which you have practiced and improved by time. Can you share with the rest? So, can you identify an intrapersonal or interpersonal skill which you have practiced and improved by time? We explain exactly what we want from them, and we give them some time to think of those skills that, or at least one of them, which after practicing, they managed to improve. Like for example, um, communication. At first, I found it difficult to communicate with others. Then um, I started practicing um, and maybe they explain what practicing meant for them. And they um, this skill has, has improved, like for example, presentation presentation skills before I was terrified to 
deliver a presentation, but then um, uh, I started practicing this at home, so presenting my work, um, uh, the work that I was going to present in class um, um, with family members of mine. And like that, I started feeling more at ease when it actually comes the time that I present in class. Can you share with the rest? I think it's up to you on how to how to manage this. You can assign students in pairs of twos, threes, whatever, and they have a um, uh, short discussion where they share, uh, where they each share. Others, you can have um, uh, everyone shares in a large group. Um, it really depends. I mean, you will realize whether you think that students will feel comfortable enough to, to actually share, especially if they don't know each other. So it's really up to you to decide and adapt this accordingly. The aim of the session, obviously, is for the students, the learners to come and learn, not to feel um, embarrassed, judged or whatever. So it's up to us as trainers to create this atmosphere. Then this question. So another discussion here, which skills are the most important? So some people would say that interpersonal skills are the most important. Others have a different opinion and they would say that intrapersonal skills are more important. We can only improve our personal and professional lives if we work on both. Right? So let's focus, let's emphasize that intrapersonal skills are as equally as important as the interpersonal skills. They are equally important as the interpersonal skills. However, we need to start by understanding ourselves. We need to be more self-aware to understand what we need to work on to further improve. And this is here as a link to the next session. The next session that I will deliver will be on self-awareness. And here I am making a link that I will start with self-awareness uh, next time. Next time we're going to focus on self-awareness. In fact, I already mentioned this, the next session, the next session, we will be discussing self-awareness. Before this session, you are encouraged to do some research on self-awareness and identify tools, methods, approaches that help you improve your self-awareness. This is very important the way I see it, because if you remember earlier on, we, we, we mentioned um, the importance of independent learning. Yes, we have a role as teachers, as trainers, but we need as well to encourage them to work on their own. And here I'm giving them someone to do. So we're focusing on self-awareness. Please do your research on the tools, the methods and the approaches that perhaps can help me improve my self-awareness. Obviously, in the next session, do not ignore this. So if you give them some work to do, start by actually asking them the work done, because if we don't give importance to um, whatever work we assign, then obviously the next time they will not even bother to do work on their own at home. Okay, so keep that in mind. I'm giving them some work, but then I'm giving, um, I'm, al I'm allocating some time at the start of the next session to actually go through this. So some additional material once again, because um, there are the contact hours that they are doing with me, with you as trainers, but also um, uh, there is time dedicated for the students to work on, to work on their own. So interpersonal versus intrapersonal keys to communicate. And uh, I have this session. I have this actually link. Okay, so here uh, I found this. I think that it's a good read for them after my session. Interpersonal versus inter intrapersonal keys to communicate. So it's focusing in particular 
focusing, uh, so on communication, sorry. Um, be strong in both, emphasizing what we said earlier on, what is interpersonal communication, some aspects that make this term of communication explicitly interpersonal, what is intrapersonal communication, once again, aspects that make this uh, make these uniquely inter intrapersonal differences between both other differences, so parties involved, the, the reasons, the media and feedback. Here we have some, um, basically a table. What are intraper intraparasitic skills? And it goes on. So before we finish off, I would like to show you what I had prepared. Um, we can call it a lesson plan. All right, call it whatever you like. So activity description, soft skill, okay. Title of the activity was introduction to interpersonal and interpersonal skills. The theme was introduction and also an icebreaker. In total, this session should take 60 minutes. Notice that in this case, it was much shorter, obviously, because there is no discussion. I am not discussing with anyone, all right? But when you have students on the other side, of the screen if you're doing this online or in class then definitely two hours is a good is a good time for for that summary for this lesson students are introduced to intrapersonal and interpersonal skills through an interactive session at the end of the session the focus will be on intrapersonal skills to serve as a link to the next activity goals recognize the importance of intrapersonal and interpersonal skills Identify different intrapersonal and inter interpersonal skills that we use on a daily basis. Differentiate between intrapersonal and interpersonal skills. And finally, understand the, that intrapersonal and interpersonal skills can be practiced and improved. If you remember, these goals were actually part of the presentation that I prepared for the students. Materials, okay, so some images, some readings, music, video clips. Yes, um, uh, I forgot to mention the, the music. Um, when you give them a task and they have to reflect, I think it helps to create an atmosphere that actually encourages them to, to reflect. So some relaxing music normally helps. So preparation, set up learning environment should be preferred. Set up of learning environment should be prepared beforehand, once again, it can be online or physical, whatever you choose. There needs to be um, some preparation beforehand. Resources, if you're doing this in class, projectors, speakers, papers, pens, colors, sticky notes, a board or a chart, and some relaxing music, an example, which I am providing here. Instructions, so first grade the students, then ask students for their expectations for a session. Introduce yourself, academic background, work experience, hobbies or interests, Ask students to do the same. Invite students to observe six situations, the one I prepared, in PowerPoint presentation, and moderate discussion on the skills they observe. Use relaxing music whenever possible. Ask students if they can define intrapersonal and interpersonal skills, something which I forgot to do in this session. So before defining them, I ask them to come up with the definitions themselves. So before showing them that table uh, that is differentiating between the two types of skills. Then discuss difference between intrapersonal and interpersonal skills. Ask students to briefly discuss the importance of the different intrapersonal and interpersonal skills and model one student at a time. Moderate a discussion to arrive to the point that interpersonal and interper interpersonal skills are equally important. Invite students to share their experiences that demonstrates that skills can be practiced and improved. Briefly introduce the following session. Emphasize on link between sessions. Debriefing and evaluation. So what should I do to debrief and also to evaluate? Wrap the session by asking two students to discuss the salient points in session. So ask for a volunteer or two, or pinpoint a student or two, and ask them to discuss the most important points in their opinion. 
assessment students to write a reflection on own experience which demonstrates that skills can be practiced and improved. Another assessment task can be students to discuss the importance of interpersonal and interpersonal skills to improve own personal and professional life. Obviously, this will uh, you will be giving guidance on what exactly should be assessed. Tips for the facilitator: ensure that all participants are engaged. We started off with um, uh, highlighting the fact that student engagement is crucial. And we finish with this. Ensure that all participants are engaged. Make use of different activities to reach as many students as possible, like open ended questions to all students, individual questions, write answers on sticky notes, etc. You need to be obviously um, creative yourself. Now, um, to finish off, before actually leaving um four questions because obviously you're not you're not um you can do this live i'm giving you my email address so okay so kenny.muscat at mcas.edu.mt any feedback that you have for this training, the trainer session, any questions um, that you might have, something which you want me to clarify, or maybe a suggestion for this training, the trainer session to be improved, please reach me by email. I will be happy um, to see to see what you think about this session. I would like to finish off with um, thanking you for your attention. I don't have feedback on the session. Um, uh, today, uh, unless obviously you write to me um, by email, but um, uh, if you are actually doing this session with your students, do ask for feedback. It's very important that um, you ask for feedback uh, to understand what they liked about the session, what perhaps they did not like, um, uh, and ways that you can improve the session so i would like to thank you for um your attention i look forward to receive emails from you and i wish you luck um with when it comes to you to deliver this um this unit thank you for your attention <laughs>